up? Welcome to the Zdesky Trucks Podcast. This is episode number 51, and I am Adam Choi. To follow this show, it's at Tedeschi Trucks Podcast on Instagram, and I'm at Adam Choi on Instagram and Twitter if you want to follow me. And of course, I have no affiliation with the band. This is not an official podcast for them or anything. I am just a fan, and if you're here, I'm guessing there's a good chance that you might be too. So please be sure to subscribe as well and give the show a positive review on iTunes. That's always helpful and appreciated. So, for today's episode, I'm joined by superfan Julie Yule. Technically pronounced Isle, but Yule or Isle seems to be acceptable, even within her own family. Anyway, Minnesota's own Julie grew up on music, and once her kids more or less grew up, Julie and her husband uh, were once again able to attend more shows, which coincided with her newfound love for Susan Tedeschi and later Tedeschi Trucks Band. These days, with TTB not on the road and uh, with them raising money to help their crew, Julie and other amazing fans have really stepped up uh, to try to help the band raise money um, by organizing all sorts of raffles and auctions, and uh, we're going to get into all of it. But just a heads up to follow these uh, various raffles and auctions, please join the Facebook uh, groups, uh, the private Facebook groups, Tedeschi Trucks Band Fans and Tedeschi Trucks Band Family and Friends. Um, Shouldn't be too much of a process to get accepted into those groups if you're not already in there. It's Tedeschi Trucks Band Fans and Tedeschi Trucks Band Family and Friends on Facebook. And of course, I can't say it enough, givebutter.com backslash TTB to support the crew givebutter.com backslash ttb to support ttb's crew and we'll explain how the uh and julie will explain during the episode how the uh, auctions and everything and raffles and everything work and uh go along uh, with the givebutter.com uh ttb backslash ttb uh link and just a heads up there's a little bit of background whistling or feedback that comes in and out during this interview which i uh, take full responsibility for but you should be able to follow the interview and any technical snafus shouldn't take away from the power of Julie's words. And if anyone out there does actually think they can help me clean up the sound a bit, feel free to reach out. I can, uh, for real, always update and replace the audio with uh, something higher quality even after the episode is released. But let's just get started. Here's Julie Yule. So it's good to see you today, Julie Yule, or Julie Isle, should I say. Um, <laughs> How are you doing? And, and I'm learning about, I'm learning a lot of things already about your name and all that. I am doing well. I am uh, playing a little bit of hooky from work, uh, you know, taking the afternoon off and, and sitting, chatting with you. And I'm, thanks so much for giving us the chance. Oh, for sure. I appreciate the time and I'm happy to be helping get, getting you, uh, getting you out of work. That's, uh, you know, I'm, do, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing my part, at least just for the, for the day. I don't want to take you out of, out of the job force permanently or anything, especially during these tough times for many, many, many people. Mm-hmm. And we'll get, we'll get to, we'll get to all that, but we were talking before we started recording about your name and everybody thinks it's Yule, but it's actually pronounced Isle, but you're kind of past it at this point. I th- and I thought that was kind of interesting that Susan Tedeschi, her name is always mispronounced. So uh, <laughs> tell me about tell me the name thing and what that's been well, like. It's a, it's a, obviously my husband's family name. And um, it's interesting because two of his siblings um, went the easy way and went with Yule. And uh, my husband and his sister both went with Isle. Um, it's uh, it can be a challenge. Like I said earlier, um, my line is, well, I used to have a normal last name before I got married. Um, so I answer to either one, um, Isle or Yule. It's just habit after so many years. Yeah, that makes sense. You have a you have a good good you have a good approach to it <laughs> for for sure. How are you holding up during this uh, super fun 2020, 2021, whatever year it is now in general? whatever day it is, that was more the concern. Um, I work for a labor organization. And so I have not actually missed time. Um, We have a modified schedule. So I go in two or three days a week. um, And then other people on staff will come in to fill in the other days. So I'm working from home and the office. And it's not nearly as much fun as people think it is. People think, oh, working from home sounds lovely. 
um, I can tell you that the file you want is never where you are. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm learning that. Yes. Realizing that. Oh, I, oh, I don't have that. Oh, crap. So um, that's the challenge. Yeah, it's an adjustment. What kind of organization did you say it was again? For a labor organization. A what organization? A labor organization. Labor, okay. okay. Gotcha. For union. Um, I've been there. I'm in my 31st year. Um, and we deal, uh, uh, people don't really know what that is. Uh, we are the liaison, the go between, between employees and their employer sure. for working conditions and wages and and those types of issues collective and bargaining collective bargaining yep and um i work with a lo- a union that has primarily all food production so we haven't had any downtime uh in fact um some of them are running more hours than normal because uh, you have people at home you know working from home and it just changed the whole dynamic Right. My st- freezer is full. Mm-hmm. This is sort of a new thing for me, this cooking. And I was like, telling my mom, I'm like, I'm like, I'm learning to cook at least a little bit better. And I think with some level of confidence. And she's like, yeah, everyone in the world is doing that. <laughs> You're not new. I did the whole, I need to make sourdough bread thing in that craze. Yeah, I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look. we're, we're trying. We're, we're trying different things. We're experimenting. But why don't we get into your history a little bit? Uh, and tell me where you were like born and raised and some family stuff and music influences. You're from the, from the Midwest, if, uh, is that I, correct? I'm a Minnesota girl born and bred. Um, I was born in a small suburb outside of Minneapolis and I haven't moved other than college uh, more than 15 miles in that diameter. Uh, family's close. My son and his family are 20 minutes away. My other son and his girlfriend are 20 minutes away in the other direction. Um, I like it here. We have four distinct seasons. Uh, winter's a little bit longer than everybody else's. Um, but I like, I, I can't imagine living anywhere else. Yeah, um, that's, that's yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, so I, I am the youngest of four children. Um, I was an oops. Um, Me too. And I know that because they were eight, 10 and 12 when I was born. <laughs> so I know that, you know, they didn't plan. Yeah, that's okay. But that's yeah. what my older brother is the one who started me in my love of music, really. Um, back in the seventies, it was cool to have a garage band. And he had one that mirrored um, Blood, Sweat and Tears. And I remember falling asleep on the stairs, listening to them play their music at, you know, full board noise level. So that's, I mean, it started at five or six, probably. Yeah. I was going to say, you must be in elementary school and your brother's probably in like high school or something like that. If the age difference. He graduated the year I started kindergarten. Graduated high school the year. So yep. kindergarten. Wow. High yeah. So you, did you, did you have like a, you had like five parents, basically, in a sense, and three of them were like cool because they yeah. were siblings. Um, it's really funny. My dad used to tell the story that I didn't talk until I was two and I haven't shut up since. Um, you know, when they were that much older, I didn't have to ask for anything. I didn't have to, you know, say anything because I got everything. If I pointed, I got it is what they tell me. So, wow. yeah, I was pretty spoiled. <laughs> What did you yes. want though? Just toys and food, whatever, like I, kid things. Like if I wanted food or any of the, like, you know, they have pop. Oh, and I point and, you know, oh, and they bring it to me and I get it. Yeah. Chances are with, with, with those, with five other people, I guess, mom, dad, and three siblings, somebody's going to, going to be, going to oblige to your request, a uh, cute little kid or something like that. Let's keep the baby happy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So some people would say I'm still really spoiled. <laughs> well, at least you're self-aware if that's the case. So you got, you got, you, you got that going. <laughs> so, um, and for music, I, I don't really have anything I hate. I mean, I, there's things I prefer. I'm not a big rap fan. Um, you know, 
Um, yeah, I was going to ask about like what music besides like your brother's blood, sweat and tear style band were you into even like elementary school, like middle school, junior high? Like what kind of music were you into growing up? What was the difference between your brothers and family music and what you liked specifically? Or you liked a lot well, of stuff. My dad was um, a big swing. He loved the swing music. And um, I, you know, I don't. He, my mom probably never got the radio. <laughs> between kids he controlled and, it yeah yeah never got to control it um so i don't really know you know what her preferences were um i have had a really eclectic um library offered to me i mean you know um blood, from blood sweat and tears to you know the beatles to john lennon to you know all of the really big names at the time because sure. you know one of my siblings was going to be into one of them you know what I mean? Even if they didn't, if they didn't all like the same music, I still got exposed. Yeah, this is all like vinyl records that that your family had in the house. Yeah, the and it's funny because, and I'm kind of ashamed of it now. I wasn't then. My first vinyl record was Casey and the Sunshine Band, and I yeah, they have and, awesome songs. Well, yeah, it's yeah, <laughs> they do. Um, and then of um, course I got, I got into Kiss. You know, so double life platinum was huge. Yeah, you're yeah. you're you have, you have eclectic taste. What yeah. about like what about like your peers versus your family? Was it the same kind of music, or, or did your peers bring different different kind of music to to your life? I think my friends. I had I remember a friend growing up who really loved country music, and I had not ever really been exposed to that. Um, and it's when Willie Nelson came out with. Um, uh, didn't he sing Don't It Make My no, no that was Crystal Gale he came out with some song and I remember thinking oh, I, I like that that's not so bad um, I do like some country yeah classic country is what I always say to people that's what everyone who's not a big country fan likes is the, the traditional older dudes I'm not a big fan of the pop country crossover stuff right um, same think some of it all sounds exactly the same yeah <laughs> not, to, not to disparage any artists because they each their they're, own right they're all out there you know working their way through it but some artists have the same song just different words is what i think yeah it's funny because I've, I've i feel like this is coming up whereas like if you're not a fan of that artist or that band and you're like from an outsider point of view, from your perspective, all their songs sound the same. Oh, that's, you know, and that's how everyone feels about stuff they're not into or can contend to. Yeah. And I, and I, I try to avoid artists who use auto tune. Cause like, yeah, I think that's just a crutch. I just, I think the sound is grating. It's also like something about the sound is like unpleasing to me. It's not even just the, the uh the the moral or whatever aspect of it the music that yeah. you know it's just the sound of the auto tune i don't i don't i don't i don't love the the sound itself what about um college you said you that's when you kind of went away somewhere i uh i went to college in lacrosse wisconsin and um that was when um mtv started the year i went to college it tells you how old i am like i'll be 57 soon um, and so the door opened to all this music that um, I hadn't been exposed to because it just wasn't necessarily in my range. You know, I, it wasn't in the um, purview, for, per se. And so, um, I mean, I hadn't really heard David Bowie until that. Um, I, you know, um, it, it changed how I listen to music, I think. I think that was the beginning of opening my eyes that there was so much more out there. Other beyond beyond sixties and and seventies kind of music, and Bowie's a part of that. But you just happened to discover him a little and bit later and stuff. I think that's a great point. It was, you know, because it spread my boundaries. You know, but David oh, Bowie I, can do that. <laughs> yeah, he can. Um, but I mean, I think the whole MTV sure. generation thing, you know, just expanded what you could you could hear i mean i heard pat benatar um I, you know who i saw in concert and she's just as good as she was then um maybe not as active on stage because she's you know slowed down a little 
but yeah, I, I like it. I wouldn't have a TV in the house if it were up to me, but it's not up to me. So I have one. Yeah. You just like, you just love uh, music. How far is lacrosse from, from where you grew up in, in Wisconsin? About three hours. About three hours. So that's not too bad. That's far, yeah. farther enough to go away to college, but close enough to be to people can visit and come home. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's cool. What, what did you, uh, what did you study there? And what did I, you know? I started out um, majoring in marketing and I found at the time that there wasn't really a lot of um, call for it. And so I never finished my degree. I should have, that's, I, that's a pretty big regret, but I'm now into more of the business management end of it, the financials. And sure. um, I, I, I like that stuff. Um, I have a really, I have an interesting job. Like today, for instance, I was thinking when I was driving in that I was going to do A, B, and C. These are the things I had to get done. Well, I didn't even see them because, you know, somebody calls and they need help or there's something else going on. And so the challenge of my job is that it's never the same. And I don't think marketing would have been like that. I think that I found the career I was meant to have. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Why don't you tell me about like sort of your musical journey and, and I'm sure life itself is going to be sprinkled in there as well, you know, sort of post college and and even post discovery of the MTV or where did you, your musical taste and then and life go? Were you going to a lot of shows? What were you buying? You know, I'll let you kind of tell your, tell your story and just jump in uh, here and there. We, um, so I got married got married uh, really young, really young. And um, that's when Journey was huge. And so um, that's my husband's favorite band. I don't know if it still is, but so, you know, they played a lot of smaller venues and smaller tours. They weren't a really big band. And so we, I mean, that's who we'd go see, or we go to the local bar and hear whoever they had, but not long after that, I'd only been married a couple of years when I had a baby. And so that changes, you know, everything. Sure. You know, you don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go anywhere. Um, and as my kids grew up, I mean, I still expanded um, my music. I, I'm a huge James Taylor fan. I think he's an amazing songwriter. Um, I've seen him, I don't know, 10 or 12 times. Um, and so my kids, the rule when my kids were growing up is that you could listen to music, but you had to be able to tell me what it meant. Interesting. Because if you, if you listen to the song, if you listen to what they're saying, you know what it's about. And it's not just somebody screaming lyrics in a rap song. Because um, Eminem was pretty big when my kids were growing up. And I, I never quite got it. <laughs> but that was always the rule is that you had to tell me what it meant. Yeah. Um, and I think it made them um, more attuned to artists. Um, and so they, I mean, my, they're uh, going to be 31 and 35. And so um, I don't think my oldest has young kids. So I don't think there's a lot of music in his future. Um, my youngest got my love of music. He will travel. I mean, he went to San Francisco for a festival. He, and he said, but mom, nobody understands. I said, uh, I do. <laughs> the people you know? at the festival understand. Yeah, I mean, I, I've flown to Chicago to see Derek and Susan. I more than once I, you know, I've traveled for music and I think that that's a good thing. I mean, I think that getting out of your comfort zone and, and, you know, expanding that horizon only makes you a better human. I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm working on it. I'm, I'm, work, I'm working on it. We have to get past a pandemic first. <laughs> That's true. There's some, there's some hurdles, but I like, I like that approach that you have with your, uh, with your kids about it, to, you know, talking about what the music means to you. Cause maybe even it is just like screaming lyrics, have heavy metal or a rap or something like but if they explain that in a way that's like, I understand that this is silly and blah, 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 but it's an outlet and it makes me feel good and I'm not hurting anyone. So it's cool. And you'll and be I, like, oh, maybe that's okay. And I like the beat or I like the tone or I like, and that's okay. But tell me why. Right. right? I don't just, oh, I, I like it, mom. That's fine. 
Oh, no, I need to know why. It's good to know why. I think there's, it's an innate thing for humans to want to know why. And it'll get them asking themselves. It probably gets them asking themselves these questions and changes how they, or at least influences how your kids just thought about art and thought about life, maybe even more broadly. Well, I think it made them pay attention. Yeah. Because, right? This is the kind of music I know I like. So maybe I should look for other things I kind of like, you know, I hope. Gotcha. Well, where were where were we uh, in your 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 journey? We were, were, were did we get to the nineties or we're not, I know we're not quite at D- Derek and Susan yet, or are we? Well, it wasn't it wasn't much long. Um, the nineties, I was you know um, a stay at home mom. I went to I saw Natalie Merchant, who did the as everybody says the thank you song. Um, I saw James Taylor. I, I saw things that were. Um, easy for me to get to, easy access, and not a lot of money. Um, and so, and for many years, I didn't see anything live, just because it, it just wasn't in the budget. You know, you have two, sure. kids, it, you know, okay, let's see, it's, it at that time was $50 for a ticket. And I was like, Oh, that's groceries for the week. I can't do that. But you're always listening to music. Always. Yeah. Uh, um, I like classic rock wasn't classic when I first started listening. <laughs> it was always classic rock for me. I will say that. Um, I love Bob Seger. I can tell you every word to every single Bob Seger song. Not that he's really popular, but he was, um, I think probably my high school years was pretty much Bob Seger. Um, and how he, you know, he had so many different kinds of music in the same, on the same CD. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a great artist for sure. And I guess that 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 part of the country is not you're not in Michigan, but uh, I think that part of the country probably connects with with a lot of Bob Seger. Well, I would a, guess. A thing, I think. Right. Um, his song "Turn the Page" is probably one of my favorite all time songs. Right. It still it still has such broad appeal though because of the I guess it's rock and roll and it, it's catchy songs and great guitar stuff. So he like. He was able to <laughs> appeal to a lot of people, I think. A lot of, he, he was cross, uh, not cross charts. He was, but I mean, he. Yeah, crossover from whatever you want. Crossover wanted. from rock to some pop, because like his um, Accompany Me album had a lot of more ballad kind of things. Um, right, he got airplay no. beyond like classic rock and rock radio, I would it's say. Against the Wind is the, the, see, the album I'm thinking about. Um, so I mean it, and well, going back to the college, and I kind of skipped around. Sorry. That's all right. <laughs> it's all good. Lacrosse had um, a civic arena that was at that time it was five dollars general entry, general admission, and it was like, well, five bucks. I'll, hell, I'll go see anybody. You know, we saw Kiss, we saw um, REO Speedwagon. I mean, you name it. At that time, the bands that were touring. Uh, sticks, um, Little River Band, all that kind of stuff. It was five bucks. And I was like, well, that's cheap. You know, that's cheaper than beers for the night. <laughs> so, yeah. I, yeah, you're I able to find things. Yeah, you have to look and go, okay, well, I only have so many dollars. I'm kind of doing a little bit of that in my own life for sure. I don't have family or kids really uh, her at the moment, but... Um just always looking for music comedy any culture whatever i can find especially when there's more opportunity for it but yeah and at that point it was like five bucks you know that's nothing right oh yeah and now i mean i go ahead no i I was just gonna say so i'm guessing maybe when your kids started to grow up and 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 that's when you sort of maybe got dove back into going to shows and that's when maybe Derek and susan started to become a part of your your musical journey how's this going somebody a friend of mine said hey i think you really like this song and i said okay what is it and it was uh angela montgomery it's the first time i heard her sing that susan singing yep Susan. yep and i went oh i really like that (laughs) and um not long after that she was touring with the dead show um i think it was it was the dead and when, what year is this or what, what do you think this was probably like 2011 uh, 
No, not to go far. Yeah. Three, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so I went and saw her, and I was, you know, that opened up the whole Grateful Dead, uh, catalog of songs and and those people that played with them, and um, yeah, I that's what started that, and so I started tracking her and. Um, I think they're probably back to the river. I think that was the name of the CD. Right. Yeah. It was just won't burn. And I, I was like a sponge. I just started absorbing stuff that she had. Yeah. Those so, are great albums. Both of them. Yeah. I, I think it's funny that her and Derek were up for uh, Grammys the same year and she voted for him. <laughs> <laughs> like, that seems kind of silly. Um, but yeah, so that's when it started. Gotcha. And, Did, and you saw Susan live, you said, somewhere in the early on? In the, in, when was it? Minneapolis has, um, the Minnesota Zoo has a small amphitheater that seats, I don't know, 500 maybe, 750. And she was touring with um, the James Hunter Trio. And they came to the zoo, and that was the first time I'd seen her live. In a and zoo. And what did you call it? The what? What was the name of that place? It's called the, if they have an amphitheater, they have Amp- like a, yeah, like a, an old Greek style open air. Gotcha. An amphitheater. Yeah. An, an amphitheater. And it was at the Minnesota Zoo. That's where they have it. And tickets are, they're kind of hard to come by because it's a small venue and they tend to sell out quick. Um, I've seen lots of people there. Buddy Guy. Um, the name escapes me, but I've seen many people there. I've seen Tedeschi trucks there probably three times, four wow. times. Wow. Are there like animals around? Is there like a, in the backdrop? Is there like a tight? You can see the, yeah, you walk through the zoo. You walk through, there's no cages, I don't think. Um, but they, it's really funny because they put the animals to bed on nights that they have concerts because the music can disturb them. That's, that makes sense. I'm like, well, that's pretty cool. Um, but they outgrew the stage, you know, they, Tedeschi trucks kept adding people and going, okay, well now we don't fit. Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> like, right. yeah, I was going to say like a, a small venue is probably a small stage and probably yeah, somewhat it, limited. That's where I met Kofi. Kofi came out into the crowd and he grabbed the poster I bought for him and took it backstage and got it signed by a bunch of people and brought it back out. And I'm like, that's awesome. Thank you. So that's how I met him. That's, that's cool. And that was with uh, TTB or Derek Trucks band? Or? So I never saw T- Derek Trucks. I hadn't, hadn't really heard of him. I have now, clearly. <laughs> of course. I like some of his stuff. I like some of the stuff that he did as a Derek Trucks band. Um, but I find with fans, you either really, really like the Derek Trucks band or you really, really like Susan and you're okay with them together. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like it all. I like TTB the most, of course. And I just like, you know, songs. Too. I like some, some, like, you know, a lot of Susan solo songs, a lot of Derek Trucks band songs. But TTB yeah. the most, yes. I like, the, I, I like that they went to the big band, you know, the horn section, the backup, you know, I, that's a different That's the sound. sound. Yep. The, it's not out there. Nobody else is doing it. No. That I've heard of. Yeah, who's do- no one is doing that specific combination with like, you know, the 10 to 14 sized band other than like, I guess maybe some even like touring musicians who tour with bands. They don't have they don't always have like three backup singers. They don't always have a full horn section. They might have like, you know, maybe. elements of this, but not to the capacity where it's your core members. Yeah, this I mean, this is a, a traveling group of musicians that. Um, they're road warriors as far as I'm concerned they go out there and they tour and they hit places and you know um, but nobody else sounds like them yeah but do you remember when you first uh, learned about Tedeschi Trucks and Derek and Susan getting together or discovered that that uh, well, that act I, because I was following Susan right you know um, and they talked about it um, before the first CD came out they talked about it and they're like, okay, well, you know, we've been married for a few years. We think maybe we could try a band. And I thought that was really funny. I thought, well, if you're married, why can't you get along on the road? I, you know, that made sense to me, but um, they said it was a struggle. They said it was really hard for them to um, 
be together all the time, you know, before yeah, that's, be- that's the adjustment, giving each other space is, but you know, and, um, but I, I followed them right along. I mean, I, when Susan said she was, you know, they were ending this and starting this, I was like, okay, well, I could listen to that. You know, I, I don't remember a time. I don't like them. Yeah. It was, it was, it was a seamless thing. you you, it was just all in terms some regards, Susan Tedeschi's music. And she just happened to join this band and you're like, okay, I'm going to follow this band now. Yeah. If you're not going to sing here, well, you're going to sing here. Well, I'll just go over there then. <laughs> it sounds good. Did you, uh, do you remember the first time you saw TTB live or, or, or yeah. whatever the highlights are from the early era, the early era, I'll let you uh, share that you remember. I remember seeing him was at the zoo and I remember Derek going into this guitar stole and I went, wow, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Well, it turns out, this is really funny. I, it turns out that I had gone to see uh, Santana and Derek actually, the Derek Trucks band actually opened for Santana here in, in Minneapolis. And I didn't know who he was. And some of the, one of the guys we were with said, you don't know who he is. He's like one of the best guitarists ever. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's nice. Okay. Turns out I am now 10 years later, a huge fan, right? right. I didn't know who he was, came out and the old, because who, a lot of times you don't really pay attention to the opener. You know, you're there, but you're talking or whatever. And so I didn't, I missed that opportunity. <laughs> yeah. You're an honest fan though. <laughs> I, yeah, that's a fault. I'm very honest. You keep it I, real, even with yourself though. I, I, I <laughs> maybe. You. That's you know, good. It's I, a good thing, I think. <laughs> so, and then you know, Facebook comes out and you can really follow people on Facebook or Instagram or any of those things. And um, to the internet, social media helps with tracking bands and and music. Oh, it's significantly easier. Um, YouTube. I mean, you can see just about anything you want, you know, any kind of music you want to hear. Um, And so this whole, you know, the pandemic hit and um, they came out with, well, hey, you know, We've been paying the band for the past year, but I kind of think we have to stop because, you know, it's a little expensive. And so the Fireside Sessions came out and I, of course, subscribed to all of them. And um, I heard about this Give Butter Fund and I thought, well, I donated some before, you know, what I would have done for a ticket. That's kind of how I've looked at things. Um, I'm I'm not, I will spend money if I would have spent it on a ticket, I can give it to the band. That's kind of how I feel about it. Um, and sure. so, um, and, and Tammy, Tammy Goldsmith, uh, gave me a call one night and said, you know, what do you think of this? And I said, she's talking about having auction items. And I said, Hey, I have this old poster that I, you know, I don't have any emotional attachment to, um, I'll offer it up. And I'm friends with Tim LaFave. And that started a few years ago over coffee beans. <laughs> We, we're both coffee snobs and it just kind of snowballed from there. He, I, I reached out to him and he said, Hey, I can send you a pedal if you want. And I said, Oh, that's awesome. Um, he signed it. He sent it. It went for over 300 bucks. Damn. Yeah. The concert poster I sold was over 300 bucks. And I'm thinking, well, we have to have more stuff laying around somewhere that somebody's willing to get rid of. And this is all the money from these auctions to confirm for everyone listening, all the money from these items that are being, uh, you know, submitted and, and, and auctioned are the money's all going to the crew to support the crew of TTB oh. who hasn't worked for, for quite, quite some time. 100%. None of the money from any of the auctions comes to anybody involved in putting this on all of the money. When, so like, say you bid on an item and we have you, donate to give butter uh, for TTB and prove to us that you sent that money to them and we send you the item. And I like that no money comes to me or goes anywhere else. It goes right to that band. It's a great system. And the fan knows that I'm not, we're not skimming money or we're not hiding money or any of those things. It goes right to that fund. Um, I have spent a lot of money in postage lately. (laughs) (laughs) We send everything, um, we try to send it all certified so we know that you get it. Um, but a guitar pick, just for instance, a guitar pick is $4.11 to mail. 
certified. That's just, you know, one item. Um, and to date, I, I just got an update from the team before I got on, and we are only one third of the way through of the items that we have. Wow. Yeah. And um, the, when Tammy and I started talking about this two and a half weeks ago, not very long, really, um, the fund was at 39000 And today, I think Ian said it was over... 59. Yeah, it was 59 something today. Now, we can't take credit for all of that because clearly it's not all us. Sure. But I think getting it out there in the PR and saying, hey, this is going on and, um, you know, do, let's do this. Um, I think it's helped. Definitely. It's a total, total team effort. And what you and Tammy and, and everyone else is doing is totally, totally commendable. And I know, I what was her, her name who came up with the idea to do, do raffles in addition Lori, to auction? Lori Lane. Lori went to Tammy and said, hey, you know, what do you think about a raffle? And because we had kind of hit the ground running and didn't really have a plan, <laughs> we, I don't think we could have planned for this. We hadn't thought about that. And when there was, there's four of us, there's Ian Gibbs, there's Laura Loomis, there's myself and there's Tammy. And that's the four cornerstones of the team. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Thank you. And when we sat down and we talked about it, I said, you know, I am in favor of it because I want everyone, even if they're low income, I want everyone to have a chance at this stuff. Um, and I think that the raffle is the way to do that. Now, the raffle is um, a necklace from uh, Play It Again. You know, mm, Play It Again strings? No, Play It Forward. And it's the Tedeschi Trucks Feather and a plate guitar string from both Derek and Susan. Now, I have that. Um, and I think mine, I think I spent 300 bucks on it. So a raffle ticket for 20 bucks is not bad. Um, I got the auction numbers just for that auction. It's $780 so far that we've raised just with that. We have a really, um, I can't go into a lot of details. Uh, we have a, an amazing um, offering from um, a gentleman. His name is Bill. And he goes way, way back with Derek like into the seventies with Derek and he's, he contact he reached out to me and he contacted me. He said, Hey, do you want this? Um, I got to look at Bill, Bill Luckado, I think is his name. And it's, uh, it's from 1971. Let's put it that way. Um, what I have is a, it again? Just, just, I, well, I'm not going to tell you what the item is. It's an it's, item that's related to Derek trucks and his family or something from 19. It's, 19- to, it's related to the family. And I, it's not okay. just, it's not just the trucks family. It's uh, another, a family of brothers, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good way to say it. <laughs> That's coming. And I, um, I reached out to Bob, uh, Bob Tees, who everybody knows Bobby's a sound engineer. Bob is his dad. Who's the retired sound engineer. And I said, Hey, there's a couple of things that are the Holy grail for collectors. Um, can you get them? And he said, ah, Bobby's down there. Let me see. Um, again, I can't tell you what it is specifically. I don't have it in my hands yet, but I've been told that I have a box of stuff coming from Jacksonville. That is very, that is very exciting. That's very awesome. And that's cool that you and the, and your other, the other people on your team seem to know what, not just like the idea of like doing this in the initiative, like it's cool that you guys have the knowledge of like what, and you're thinking about what do people actually want? What do collectors actually collect? Cause I just recently found out like, you know, through all seeing posts about like the TTB pins and whatnot, that pins are such a crazy thing. I don't know. I'm not saying that this is about pins, but just as oh, an example of me not knowing anything about what collectibles people are looking for is it's good I that you guys do. I can tell you, we will have three pins. Um, uh, I have more people reach out to me and say, hey, I'd like to donate to this to the band. I got um, a friend of Bobby Teese, the sound engineer. He contacted me yesterday and said, hey, I have a couple of set lists from Locken when they played with Trey. You want them? I'm like, absolutely. I have a lady who volunteered 
um, at the Beacon, uh, the fun, uh, the food shelf drive, the fun, the food drive. Um, and if you volunteered, I think it's called Give Love. If you volunteered, you got a signed set list. She said, well, you can have it. I said, that's awesome. I had a lady reach out to me and say, I have 125 posters. I'd like to get rid of some of them. This is awesome. It's um, yeah, yeah, people have really been been responsive. And I'm going to put this information in the intro and the outro on all the episode description. But what is, just so we have it in the episode right now, as people are listening, what is the best way people can find find the auctions? Is, is it joining the, the, the couple of groups on, on online or is it is it a public thing? Or I'll let you kind of explain the best way for anyone to well, find it. Right. So if you're in on Facebook, um, we have decided that we're going to start using a hashtag on Facebook so you can search for the hashtag. The hashtag is TTB. Oh no, I'm sorry. It's Team TTB. T-E-A-M-T-T-B. And that, that will bring up posts. So you'll be able to see them that way. You may have to join a group to see them. Right. The Tedeschi Trucks Band fans group I've seen posts. And I've also seen posts in the Tedeschi Trucks Band family and friends group and i'm sure i'm sure i don't know what the process is to get accepted into those it's probably just saying i love the band i love susan and you're pretty much in but but that would be another way to to and and if um if they can reach out we have a um, i set up a gmail uh it's ttb.givebutter at gmail.com um some people like to communicate that way um there isn't a list per se at this time of right. future and slash raffles. Um, I can tell you that there are some amazing things on this list. Um, Linda Wolf, who is the photographer that did Mad Dogs and Englishman, the original with um, Joe Cocker and Leon. Yeah, that's her book right behind me. Yep. Well, she has donated um, a print and a couple of posters, signed posters by the artist. The print has a value of $1,700. Damn. Yeah, and she reached out to me. Here, you can have this. <laughs> um, Josh Bricks, who is an amazing photographer. If you haven't seen him, look him up. He's on Instagram. Um, has donated two, two of his shots from concerts. Um, yeah, they're both awesome. Josh Brick and, and yeah. Linda Wolf. And I've talked to both of them. Great people who... who make you know shoot great photographs for sure They're amazing we have um the tedeschi trucks pins i have probably 20 different good uh picks to get out uh bob teese sent me a bunch and ed gendelman and you know ed ed is the taper that does a lot of the recording of tedeschi truck shows live ed reached out and said hey i have these picks do you want them and i'm like absolutely send me whatever you got i'll get rid of it <laughs> um and i think that i think they're going to it hasn't slowed down let's put it that way yeah no very very exciting and i i i hope the band is appreciated and at least maybe is i would think that they must be touched by everything that that all the fans are the fans are doing but just to say one more time i think tedeschi trucks band fans group on facebook and tedeschi trucks band family and friends join those private groups and i'm sure you'll be able to uh to find all the auctions being posted in those groups uh, or, you know, once you're in the group, you can also try, of course, uh, hashtag team TTB. Mm -hmm, that's correct. Hashtag team TTB, Tedeschi Trucks yep. Band fans group, Tedeschi Trucks Band family and friends group. Definitely, definitely get in, in those groups and, and, and get involved in the auctions and the raffles and, and support the band with, with whatever you can. Like, the, like we've been talking about, small amounts are helpful, large amounts are helpful. The items are not... Um, cheap items they're not insignificant these are awesome things that you're getting straight from from the band and and hardcore fans that have been collecting these items and and have been gracious enough to uh to donate this is this is good stuff and i hope that i'm i can help and that i'm helping uh at least in some small way on my end uh, as well oh i i think i mean it's amazing that that there's actually you know uh an interview like this out there for it um, you know, items that I think these are things that because people tend to have a favorite in the band. Um, and we've tried really, really hard to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to get something from one of their favorites. Um, I mean, Mark Rivers and Efren Owens and 
Gabe Dixon have all um, they're all sending us something of their of their personal items. Yeah, I've heard some outside the box suggestions for items and thoughts oh. that have been floating my way for the various members of the band. But in a, in a in a cool creative way, that's I think thing items physical items that people would be interested in owning because it's just I, part of the I, band that you love and uh, you associate these items with them. When when Mark told me what he was sending, I said, you know, I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I like that we're being a little bit mysterious. Um, so this today we're recording on Tuesday, and okay. I'm gonna, I'm going to plan to get this out on Wednesday tomorrow. The okay. first auction or the first raffle is going the drawing ends on thursday i believe which is the the strings that were the uh the uh play it forward necklace strings uh played strings yep right so definitely you guys need to check that out and then i'm going to be as far as i understand again we're all figuring this out as we go but i think i'm going to be doing the raffle drawing uh via live stream within the I, tedeschi yep. trucks band fans group on friday all the details of this will be in, in the group. So definitely join the groups, but I'm just trying to give everyone a heads up of kind of what's coming up immediately on the horizon with this. My advice is uh, check often, uh, buckle up. It's going to be a wild ride. <laughs> yeah, you have a lot of items. So this is going to be ongoing at least for a few weeks, if not longer, it seems like. Our goal is, um, so the original goal, let me let's backtrack just a little bit. So the original goal was, Bob T said that he was kind of hoping to get one dollar um, per stream of the fireside sessions, and in the first session it was streamed by fifty-four thousand people. So that was our goal. Let's get to fifty-four thousand. Well, we blew past that. Now the goal is a hundred thousand, and we will. Are, and we'd also like to keep this out until they go back on the road, until they actually have an income again. That's our goal. Yeah, I suggested that same on a Bob T's Facebook post that, you know, let's keep might as well keep it going until there's no, you know, less of a reason to keep it going. And, and they're they're back, you know, fully working again. And, and, right. and if I'm only a third of the way through the inventory we have right now, <laughs> with, we got a long time to go. Right. And and it's not just the the inventory necessarily, the auctions or the raffles, it's just that people are just been so gracious and donating and just all the all the whatever attention that we can try to get to the givebutter.com backslash TTB page is like more yeah. will increase the total, you know, the, the total. I've actually been speechless with some of the donations I've got. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I, they put, they, I, they put me to shame. I'm looking at someone like, damn, you people are very beyond generous. Like I, yeah, it's amazing. It's, a, it's a, astonishing that people are, are, are stepping up. I, mean, I shouldn't be surprised because um, I don't. Think yeah, I know what you mean. You're, you're not saying it in a doubtful way, but just uh, to see it play out is is um, it's moving in a way for sure. It's to rewarding. See. Rewarding. Yes, that too. I, I'm seeing these people going, hey, these people are really. I mean, really, honestly, what employer would pay all of his employees for one year for not working? I don't yeah. know. Anything, right. And. That's the kind of people they are. They stepped up. They took care of them. Yeah, you and know? I think, yeah, I was gonna say that's. I think that's another thing that that inspires us about this band, even beyond the music. And of course, I've talked about this. Is that you know, only knowing Derek and Susan and the band from afar and in passing before or after shows over the year, the occasional show over the years. I don't really know them, but just just talking to everyone who 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 has uh, crossed paths paths with them you know, who knows them well, or has a similar, similar thing like me, like a fan, like everyone has positive things to say about them as, as people and how they treat um, their okay. coworkers, their band, people in the business, the fans, like, it's just like, um, you never hear, I've never heard a bad thing said about either Susan or Derek, like ever. I, I mean, I, I was in Chicago after a show and we were staying at the hotel they were in and they'd been on at eight o'clock on a radio station locally for an interview. And then they played a concert. And this was at like 1130 at night, they were getting dressed to go out to dinner. And Susan stopped to sign my set list. And I said, aren't you exhausted? And she said, it's what women do. And just laughed at me. And I said, oh, okay. I, 
I would, I would have curled up to go to sleep, <laughs> you know, but she's was, you know, polite and friendly after that kind of a day. So, I mean, I, I just think that this band is, um, they're astonishing to me in this day. Yeah, so many people have so many anecdotes describing exactly what you just, just described. And I think it's, I think that's what's really propelling us, the fans, to to do our best to 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 um to support them. And it's all of them. It's not just Derek and Susan. Right. It's, I mean, Kebby has his own um, nonprofit group in Atlanta for um, music, music in the park. Yeah. yeah, music in the park. And, you know, Mark has given back. And so these are people who I think they all fit the same mold. Right. I think that, well, birds of a feather, which is where the feather came from. Um, and that's, I, I think they're all like that. Cool. Well, I think we, we, covered, we covered a lot. Is there anything else that we need to cover or, or talk about? How many times have you seen Tedeschi Trucks Band, by the way, live? I'm just curious. 25? Yeah, that's that's plenty. <laughs> it's, uh... I, and I will. I mean, I as soon as that we've already talked about. So um, some of the group of us has said, "Hey, we because I haven't met any of these. I met Ian, but I haven't met Tammy, and I haven't met Laura, and I haven't met you know. Um, we talked right. about getting to Chicago because um, it's kind of central. And... Yeah, keep me posted with that. I I I, uh, I, <laughs> I, I got to get out of town. I got to see some shows. Like that's kind of that's a lot of a big chunk of like my music budget like i love i love all kinds of classic rock and have eclectic tastes in music but as far as like going to shows it's kind of like uh, i'm gonna go to a, a lot of local shows and see my friends bands and friends friends bands here and then you know for my my bigger shows i'm gonna the budget goes to ttb <laughs> oh absolutely yeah i will keep you in the loop it's um in chicago is a, the state theater is a great place for concerts yeah residency they do there and all that and um Bucket list is Red Rocks. I heard they were opening up today. I heard they they got permission to open up to 2,500. So I don't know what that'll do for other tours. I but think we'll gradually get there. We'll gradually, we'll gradually get there. I have my shot. I'm ready to travel. <laughs> do it up. You're, you're all, you're all set to go. Anything else? Did we, did we cover it all? I'm going to definitely throw more links and plugs and, and in the outro and uh, in the description of the show, but I'll let you, uh, let give you the floor if there's anything else you wanted to plug promote or mention i i just want to really um from our hearts really from the team's hearts say thank you to people who have stepped up in this um effort and and donated or spent money that they could have spent someplace else and said oh but this this is a really good thing we should spend the money on that and because i know that dollars are limited especially when people have been off work or they're, you know, they reduced hours. And I think that the amount of money that's coming out indicates that the fans really do love this band. And I can't thank them enough. Thank you. Thank everybody who's donated and participated because together we can make it better. Yeah, that was very lovely. And I appreciate you, sh you sharing all that. And honestly, I wasn't sure, like, again, a lot of things are in flux. I wasn't sure what episode I was going to put out for this podcast this week. And one of the things I was considering do considering doing was, of course, just pushing the Give Butter and the auction and all this stuff within a solo episode, but also just going through the Give Butter web, the web page and just reading the message of the supporters like that. Yeah. I was literally going to make and I still might make an episode out of that because it's so personal. It's so touching. There's it's content for me. Like I, that's what I almost did for an episode and still might. Well, I think, I, I think the band has, and, and you'll read these stories that the band has gotten them through tough times. Right. right? Your, your music. You have no idea. Them, right. You have no idea. <laughs> okay. But now it's our turn. Right. For a tough time. Step up. Yeah, right. no, they've, I mean, they've given me this whole podcast, like in, inspiration to do this podcast that's given me so much joy and, and connected with me with so many people and that you've talked about many of them already to, tonight that I've interviewed or connected with, you know, on, on social media across the country and, and world. So, I mean, it's the least I can do is, 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 you know, do what I can to help promote this, this cause for them and their, and their crew and the band. And I think that, that's what the team feels. I'm kind of speaking for them. Um, 
but I think it's this is the least I can do to help, right? Right. I I may not be giving money for donations because I'm donating postage. At, <laughs> at yeah, everybody's that. doing what what you know what they can do to help. What what you can do, and there's always and something you can do. Tammy's been instrumental in a lot of this stuff. Tammy knows people. Um, you guys all are pretty pretty knowledgeable and connected and hardworking and and all, beyond that just have your hearts in the right place too and i think that that's um it's good karma <laughs> it's yeah. really good karma yeah thank you very much for your time oh for sure thank you i'll let you get on the rest of the with the rest of your day and we'll uh we'll talk soon and we got a, a lot of a lot of things to work on on I'm hoping, our own, own I'm ends. Hoping it turns out okay i was a little nervous oh you did great so Okay. You got it. Let's talk soon. I will. Thanks, Adam. You got it. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So there you go. Episode 51 with Julie Yule. That was fun. I really thank Julie for taking the time and for all the work she's doing to try to help Tedeschi Trucks Band and their crew. Same goes for Tammy Goldsmith, Lori Lane, Ian Gibbs, and all the other amazing supportive TTB fans who really stepped up for the band during this time. But again, to follow these various raffles and auctions and participate... The best way is to join the private Facebook group, Tedeschi Trucks Band Fans, or Tedeschi Trucks Band Family and Friends, um, or both. Shouldn't be too much of a process to get into to uh, to get accepted into those groups if you're not already in there. And of course, it's GiveButter.com backslash TTB to support TTB's crew. That's GiveButter.com backslash TTB to support TTB's crew. Check out everything. Basically, what you'll do is indicate on your Give Butter donation which raffle prize you're uh, putting your name in the hat for. But it's all explained in the groups. Not too hard to find. But anyway, for but uh, anyway for now, hope everyone is uh, hanging in there out there. Also, please check out Tedeschi Trucks podcast on Instagram. That's at Tedeschi Trucks podcast. And of course, remember to tap subscribe or follow on iTunes, Spotify, or via whichever way you listen to this episode. And of course, positive reviews on iTunes are greatly appreciated. I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Adam Choi, TTB's at TedeschiTrucksBand.com, GiveButter.com backslash TTB to support the crew one more time, TTB fans on Facebook, TTB family and friends on Facebook, those two groups. But I think that's about all I got for today. Thanks again for listening. Thanks again for supporting the band. I appreciate everything. And uh, a lot more to come. Let's talk soon. Later. <laughs>